Hi, uh, welcome to uh, module 4 of week 1's lecture. So till now we have seen uh, some basics of Boolean logic and the basics of uh, operating Boolean expressions and so on. We will now start looking at more machinery required uh, to start from a problem how to get uh, how to get a truth table, how to uh, get to an expression and from there on how to minimize. So to do that we need a few things. So this lecture is going to be slightly theoretical in nature. We will not, we'll not be looking at too many problems. There are lots of definitions and other things that you have to know so that from the next week onwards we will be, uh, we'll know all the terminology that we need to. So the first thing I want you to uh, know is a change in notation that we are going to have. So, so far we have been using this dot for and everywhere but using it everywhere is quite laborious because we will have to remember to put the dot everywhere and visually it is not very good. So for example, if I go and look at this expression here x1 complement and x2 complement or x1 complement and x2 and or x1 and x2. So this is a bit uh, tedious to do every time uh, and in, in basic algebra we do not always put uh, this uh, multiplication uh, everywhere. So just like that we want to be able to get rid of this dot whenever possible. So this is the same expression rewritten with and removed. So x1 complement and x2 complement so the and is implicit here whenever we write something of this form the and is implicit. So x1 complement and x2 complement or x1 complement and x2 or x1 and x2. So this is visually better than doing this and especially if you are going to write a much larger expression with many many terms and many many variables uh, uh, remembering to put that and is a problem and also it becomes visually uh, slightly more clunky. So instead we would uh, uh, drop the dot if the intention is clear. So you will have to remember about usual precedence rules. So whenever there is uh, if you have a plus and an expression which, which has an implied dot or a dot you have to be careful about the precedences. So in basic algebra if you have 5x plus 3y you would interpret that as 5x added with 3y right and not 5 times x plus 3 times y and so on. So the same rule applies here when you read this expression this is x1 complement and x2 complement logically ordered with x1 complement and x2 it is not x1 complement and x2 complement or x1 complement. So you have to be careful about how these things are grouped sometimes we will use parentheses explicitly sometimes you should uh, use the basic rules of uh, precedence that you have in algebra just carry it over here. Okay. So now let us move on to some definitions these are fairly simple definitions but these are necessary so that whatever we discuss later becomes uh, clearer. So we will start with a single variable or a literal. So a literal is essentially a variable which is either in the complemented or in the uncomplemented form. So let us look at uh, these examples here if I have a it is a single variable and it is in the uncomplemented form a bar is in the complemented form. So a and a bar are actually two different literals of the same variable a. So you, you use the variable a, a and a bar are two different literals. This expression here a bar plus cd is not a literal because it is not a single variable in the complemented or uncomplemented form. It is a combination of multiple variables. So this is not a literal. So single variable either in complemented or uncomplemented form gives you the literal. A product term is essentially either a single literal by itself or a logical product or and of two or more literals. So we will start using the uh, so instead of saying and every time we can start using the term product now because it is just like multiplication right. So I told you the analogy earlier that you can think of and as multiplication. So we say product of two terms product of two expressions and so on in the, in, in the integer and real number fields. The same thing we can use it in uh, same terminology we can use in Boolean algebra. We will use the term product for and and a product term is either a single literal like this. So a, a bar are single literals so they are uh, by definition product terms also. So product term includes literals or you should have something of this kind. So a c is actually a and c so it is a product of a and c. Uh, a bar c d is the product of a bar c and d and so on. Even this is a product term a a a bar b is a product term a bar plus c d is not a product term because this involves a plus here. So this is not a product term because there is a plus symbol here it, it means this a bar or c d you cannot 
rewrite this using only uh, single literals and uh, their products. So all these are product terms, this is not a product term. Similarly a sum term is a single literal or a logical sum of two or more literals. So a, a bar, a plus c, so this is a, a logical or of two literals, this is a logical or of three literals and so on. So these are all valid sum terms and a bar plus c d is not a valid sum term because it has a bar plus c d and this is not a single literal. So if I, if I had given you a bar plus c that is okay, that is actually a sum term but a bar plus c d actually involves a product also. So a product term should not involve sums and a sum term should not involve products. So now let us go and look at what a normal term is. So a normal term is usually a product term in which no variables appear more than once. So let us look at this, A is a literal, it is actually a sum term as well as a product term and there are there is nothing repeating in it. So it is a normal term, similarly A bar. A plus C is, uh, you have a single literal with a plus in between, you do not see any variable which is repeating more than once in each of the terms. So A plus C is a valid normal term, A bar C D is also a valid no, normal term. So a normal term is either a product or a sum term in which variables appear no more than once. So if you go and look at this, you have A bar plus A, right. So you have, uh, if you take this as a sum, right, A bar plus A is the same variable appearing twice. So it is not a normal term. Similarly, earlier I showed you this, A, A, A bar B, right, it is the same variable appearing twice in the uncomplemented form and once in the complemented form. So this is not a normal term. So a normal term is a product or sum in which no variable appears more than once. Even if it is complemented and uncomplemented form like this, A bar A, bar A it is not a valid uh, uh, normal term. Now uh, what we really need is the definition of min terms and max terms. These are the things that we need. So a min term is defined on n variables it is a normal product term. So let, let us see what that means. Let us start with normal. Normal means you it, it can, so let us start with product. Product means it should be a concatenation, a logical and of n variables, right. We, we want n literals and we want n of them to be concatenated and it should be normal, right. So let us see examples. So A bar B C, right, it has so if I say that A bar B C is a three variable min term on A, B and C, let us see why A bar B C is a min term. So first of all, if, if I say that it is a three variable term, I should have three variables in it. So I have A, B and C. So these are, these are three variables. And what are the literal forms? A is in its complemented form A bar. So that is a literal. B is another literal and C is another literal. And I have a product of these three. So it takes care of product part of it. And finally, it is normal because none of A, B or C is appearing more than once. So A bar B, C is a min term, A, B, C is also a min term. A bar B cannot be a three variable min term because a three variable min term should contain three variables. A bar B contains only two variables even though it is a product of literal A, A bar and literal B. So it is a valid product term, it is a valid normal term also but it is not a valid three variable min term, it is a valid two variable min term however. Similarly a max term on n variables is a normal sum term with n literal. So this definition that it has to, if it is a max term of n variables it should have n literals. Similarly a min term on n variables should have n literals. So let us look at three variable max terms, for example A bar plus B plus C has first of all it is a sum, sum term because it has only sum between different literals and the literals do not repeat and all the variables appear at least once. And in fact all the variables appear exactly once. A appears as A bar, B appears as B itself, variable C appears as a literal C itself. So A bar plus B plus C is a valid max term. A plus B plus C is also a valid max term in three variables. Like here A bar plus C cannot be a valid max term in three variables because it needs one more variable whereas A bar plus B is a valid uh, two variable max term. Now let us move one step further. 
a sum of products also called SOP is a set of product terms which means it is a collection of terms that are connected with logical or. So, let us parse this sentence sum of products, what do we know about products? The product terms will only have and in and in between them right. So, if I have a product term of n uh, literals I will have only and connecting those and a sum of products should be a summation of product terms. So, let us go and look at this. So, let us let us start with the this expression first a bar c plus b d e a bar c is a valid product term b d e is a valid product term. So, a bar c plus b d e is sum of products. So, it is a valid SOP. Similarly, a b plus c. So, this is a product term and that is a product term. So, a single term is also a product term remember a b plus c. So, these both are product terms connecting that with plus is ok. So, by definition single literals are sum of products because there is no, no product there, no sum there single literals have to be sum of products. This a plus b is also a valid sum of products because you can think of a as a product of just a that is it one variable one literal and b is just one. So, it is a summation of product a and product b. So, if you understand that a itself is a valid product term and b itself is a valid product term a plus b is a valid sum of products. Similarly, a product of some expression is a set of some terms or or terms which are connected with logical uh, or operator logical uh, and operator I am sorry this must have been an and they are connected with logical and operator. So, a a bar a plus b plus c uh, all these are valid product of some terms. So, if I look at this a plus b plus c is a valid sum term it is not multiplied with anything it is not there is no product of it with anything else. So, a single term is a valid product in this is a more uh, good example a bar plus c is a valid sum term b, bar, b plus d is a valid sum term and there is an implied and between these two. So, a bar plus c and b plus d so that is a valid uh, that is a valid uh, product uh, of some terms. So, this is a product of some expression and finally, we get to what is called the canonical sum of products and this refers to expression which is written in terms of min terms. So, if I go and look at the expression a bar plus c, it is a valid sum of products right a bar b is a product c is a product a bar b plus c is a valid sum of products. However, in the canonical sum of products each product should be a min term. So, in this case a bar b c is a min term a b c is a min term. So, when I combine these two right it is a valid uh, canonical sum of product expression. The reason why it is canonical is each of the term has min each of the product term is actually a min term. So, a min term is one in which it is first of all a normal term no variable can repeat and all the variables should appear at least once. So, all the variables are appearing at least once here all the variables here are appearing at least once here and there is no variable that is repeated. So, equivalently we have the canonical product of sums where each of the product. So, so there is a product between sums each of the sum term should be a max term. So, this is a max term and this is a max term. So, this is a canonical product of sums. So, I am not implying that this expression is actually equivalent to this expression I did not imply that this is a different expression this is a different expression this is a valid CSOP expression this is a valid SOP expression, but it is not a CSOP expression. Similarly, this is a valid uh, CPOS or canonical product of sums, this is not a valid canonical product of sums. So, the reason why we have these max terms, min terms, canonical sum of products and all of this mumbo jumbo is because there is a direct correspondence between the truth tables and min terms and max terms. So, let us take a look at De Morgan's theorem, I showed this in the previous module x 1 plus x 2 and so on up to x n the complement of that is x 1 complement and x 2 complement and so on. So, what it essentially says is if I start with a sum of products. So, let us say x 1 is a product term instead of individual variables x 1, x 2 and so on assume that x 1 itself is a product term x 2 itself is a product term and so on. If I take individual product terms and I do a summation of those things and if I take the complement of that. So, the complement of sum of products, 
So, the complement of sum of products is the product of the complements. So, you can see that each term got complemented. So, complement of sum of products is equivalent to product of complements and complement of product of sums. So, you have product of let us say x1 is a sum term, x2 is a sum term and so on up to xn. If I take the product of those and complement it, it is the same as the summation of the complements. So, this is de Morgan's theorem actually. So, this is a easier way to put it in English. Complement of sum of products is equivalent to product of sums, uh, product of complements and complement of product of sums is equivalent to sum of complements. So, let us start with the min term again. A min term can be defined as a product term that is 1 in exactly one row of the truth table. right? So, now we will take it to truth tables uh, and uh, usually you go and represent a n variable min term using n bit binary integers. Let us see how to get uh, n, uh, a min term with an integer expression. So, how you start with some ordering on the variables and you form a binary number and you follow these two these two rules. So, they may look like it is a bit complicated, but we will see with examples it will become clear. We will set bit i of the binary number to 1 if the ith variable appears in the min term in the uncomplemented form and we set it to 0 it appears in the complemented form. So, let us look at this three variable expression here. This is x bar y bar z bar x bar y z x y z it is a function on three variables x y and z. So, uh, can you tell me whether this is a valid sum of product expression? Just take a while and think about whether it is a valid sum of product expression. So, if you think about it, is it so there is a sum separating three terms and each of these terms is a product. So, it is a valid sum of product expression. So, if I ask you this question, is it a valid canonical sum of products? the answer would be true for that also because uh, there th this is a function on three variables in a canonical sum of products each of the terms each of the product terms cannot have any repetitions and all the variables must appear. So, this variable this term has x y z this term has x y z and so is this term all of them have x y z in some form in either the complemented or uncomplemented form all the literals x y z are available. So, this is a valid canonical sum of product the way we are going to write this is as follows. So, if we take x bar y bar z bar we assume that the ordering is x y and z wherever I see x in the, the complemented form I will put a 0 wherever I see x in the uncomplemented form I will put a 1. So, if I take this product term x bar y bar z bar right it is actually the min term 0 0 0 the reason is x is appearing in the complemented form y is appearing in the complemented form and z is appearing in the complemented form. We assume that the ordering is x, y and z from the left to right. So, this 0 means x is uh, complemented, this 0 means y is complemented and this 0 means y is z is complemented and the min term with 0, 0, 0 means that we have the and of x complement, y complement and z complement. Let us try and interpret this one, x should be in complemented form y should be in uh, regular form and z should be in regular form and it is a min term which means it is a product of these three literals x bar, y and z that is what we have here. Finally, the last one has all of the literals in their uncomplemented version. So, it is x, y, z. So, the way we will use this is we will call this term m 0 0 0 term, we will call this term as m 0 1 1 term and we will call this term as m 1 1 1 term. right? So, wherever it is complement you put a 0, wherever it is not complement you put a 1. So, this is 0 0 0 term, this is 0 1 1 term and this is 1 1 1 term that is what we have here. So, this is in the binary form if you take this into equivalent decimal expression this 0 0 0 is actually decimal 0, 0 1 1 is decimal 3 and 1 1 1 is decimal 7. So, one concise way in which we can write this expression f of x y z is to write it as the min term m naught or the m min term m 3 or the min term m 7 which is the same as we will use sigma notation to say that it is sum. We know that for regular algebra right whenever we have sum of different things we can put a sigma outside 
so it's sigma of m not comma m3 comma m7 so you can see that it's a comma separating these three you can think of it as a set of terms m not m3 and m7 and you have to logically or those things that's what the sigma implies and this m3 m not m3 and m7 it's all in subscript form and we can drop this whenever we know that it's a sigma outside we can just drop the small case m and just write it as 037 so if you see a sigma of 037 it means it's the sum of min term 0 min term 3 and min term 7 and min term 0 as if i give you the variable ordering x y z min term 0 would be x bar y bar z bar min term 3 would be x x bar y and z and so on let us see the max terms a max term can be defined as a sum term that is 0 in exactly one row of the truth table so if i give you a truth table exact uh, i go and look at one of the ones or zero so i go and look at the output column wherever there is a zero the corresponding term is what i'm going to look at so the n variable max terms are represented by binary numbers as i showed earlier for min terms and uh, this is the way we get the max terms is slightly different from the way we get the min terms so we state an ordering of the variables the last example we had x y z we form a binary number by concatenating several things we will set bit i of the binary number to 0 if the ith variable is in uncomplemented form and we set it to 1 if it is in the complemented form so this was the reverse of what we did for min term so let us look at the example here if I go and look at these three things it looks like it is a valid product of sums each one of them is a sum and it is a product of sums in fact it is a valid canonical product of some expression because each of these things is a valid max term so a max term is one in which all the variables appear either in the complemented or the uncomplemented form so we have x plus y plus z x plus y plus z bar and x bar plus y plus z if i want to find out this uh, expression if you want to write this expression in a slightly simpler manner we want to define the notion of max terms so we have x or y or z what we are going to do is whenever a variable so first of all we stick to the ordering x y z we cannot change the ordering right x y z if i give you x y z here the interpretation for this zero is attached with z x this is with y and this is with z so x is in the comp, uh, in the uncomplemented form for max terms we will put zero this is in the uncomplemented form so again we put a zero this is in the uncomplemented form again we put a zero so this corresponds to the max term 0 0 0 and as a shortcut notation we use capital M to say max term and small case m for min terms so this capital M says it is a max term 0 0 0 and again this binary number we use m 0 as a shortcut so this is an integer 0 which is actually for 0 0 0 so let us look at this one which is slightly more interesting so x plus y plus z bar x is appearing in the uncomplemented form we associate this bit 0 for that this is y in the uncomplemented form so we associate 0 for that and z bar we associate 1 for that because it is in the complemented form so max term 0 0 1 we will the shortcut notation we will use is capital M subscript 0 0 1 which is the same as capital M integer 1 so this expression is the product of m0 m1 and m4 that is what we have here x plus y plus z into x plus y plus z bar into x bar plus y plus z is the product of m0 m1 and m4 and again from algebra we usually use pi for product we, know we use sigma for sum and pi for product so we will use pi for pi of m0 comma m1 comma m4 so remember there is no and anymore because pi already implies that we are anding so it is a comma separated list so it is the product of max term 0 max term 1 and max term 4 and whenever we have a pi implicitly we assume that the terms inside are already max terms so we can drop the capital M and write it as 0 1 4 so it is wrong to write pi of small case m0 and things like that so we always associate pi with max terms and we associate sigma with min terms so whenever we write something like 0 1 4 here it assumes that we are already having a capital M an implied max term which is being uh, multiplied with each other 
So let us look at a quick summary, this, this slide shows you a quick summary of min terms and max terms. So if I have x1, x2, x3 and if I fix the ordering from left to right, these are the possible choices for x1, x2, x3. You can see that this is number 0, number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and so on. So usually in the Boolean world we start numbering from 0, so this is row number 0, this is row number 1 and so on. The row number is actually the integer representation of the x1, x2, x3 in the binary form. So if I take this binary number as 0, 0, 0, its in integer form is 0. If I take 1, 0, 0, it is 1 into 2 square plus 0 into 2 power 0 plus 0 into 2 power, sorry 0 into 2 power 1 plus 0 into 2 power 0, that is 4 and so on. Right? So the associated bin term, if I want m naught, so the uh, is actually x1 bar, x2 bar, x3 bar. If I want max term m naught, that is x1 plus x2 plus x3, because remember on the three variables, if I have m, m naught, m subscript 0 here, like here, it is m 0 0 0. So 0 0 0 means x1 should appear in the complemented form, x2 should appear in the complemented form, x3 should also appear in the complemented form and we need a product of these three, that is what a min term means. Let us pick this row, if I want small case m 4, that is the min term 4, min term 4 would be I want x1 in the uncomplemented form, x2 in the complemented form and x3 in the complemented form. So that is what you have here and we have a product of those. If I want capital M4, I look at the row and then I do this. So capital M4 is M1000, so the interpretation for M100, capital M100 is this one means x should x1 should be in the complemented form for max term, so you have x1 complement and x2 should be in the uncomplemented form and x3 should be in the uncomplemented form. So we have those two and then max term is a sum term, so you put plus. So this is a quick summary of min terms and max terms. So let us look at this simple expression here, if I have uh, this expression 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, x1, x2, x3 are the three variables, the row numbers are 0 to 7 and I look at this function f of x1, x2, x3. We have eight terms here. If I want to, if I want you to go and write it in terms of product terms or sum terms, there is a nice and simple way to do it. So for sum terms, remember, it's you go and look at all the ones. So there is row number one which has a one, row number four which has a one, row number five which has a one, and row number six which has a one. So what we are going to write is f of x1 comma x2 comma x3 is take the rows in which you have them as ones. Row number one has a one, row number four has a one, row number five has a one, and row number six has a one. And we pick the corresponding min terms and add them up, or put a logical or of those. So that is the sigma of m1 comma m4 comma m5 comma m6. And I told you that whenever there is a sigma and a small case m, you can implicitly drop m there. So it's the sum of the row one row 4, row 5 and row 6. The English way of explaining this is f is a function which is on when the condition in row 1 is true or row 4 is true or row 5 is true and row 6 is true. Right? So one of these conditions should be true and when is this row 1 will be true? Row 1 will be true if x1 is 0, x2 is 0 and x3 is 1. So that is when row 1 uh, uh, will have will will be exercised and so on. Similarly, if I want to write this as a POS form, a canonical product of sum, in fact, what I do is you collect all the zeros. The zeros are in row number zero, row number uh, three, row number two, and row number seven. So you collect all the zeros. So they are in row number zero, two, three, and seven, and you put a pi, which implies you are actually taking these as max terms first and then the, you are actually doing a product of the max terms and since pi goes with capital M, you can silently drop the M, capital M and you have it as pi of 0, 2, 3, 7. So given a truth table, you can write in canonical sum of product using this sigma notation and canonical product of sum using the pi notation. So this brings me to the end of module 4. Uh, in the next module, what we will do is we will try and 
rewrite various sum of products and product of sums and so on in various different formats. So, that all these uh, uh, definitions that I gave you they should stick in your mind. So, I will uh, do that in the next module. So, thank you.